Well, we know Hurricane Florence could be dangerous. Yeah, as you saw at the top of the show, authorities are already urging one million people to evacuate by tomorrow. Many in Florence's path tonight are anxiously waiting uh, the models to see how close it may actually come to hitting their homes. So how can forecasters predict where the hurricane is going to hit? Good question. Here's Heather Brown. We're keeping an eye on Hurricane Florence this morning. We are now up to a Category 4 storm. As it rumbles towards the Carolina coast. But you want to know where it's going, okay? This forecast cone. That so-called cone of uncertainty. Is created from a plot of what looks like spaghetti strings. Each string correlates to a model. How many models are we talking about? Just in this picture alone, you're looking at about two dozen. And is that all that there are in the world? There's much more than this. Joe Calderon is a senior forecaster with the National Weather Service. But this is the best two dozen or so that we've had over the years. Correct. Each model is named with a series of letters. The GFS, ECMWF, you've got UK Met. And the most commonly used are the two American models, the European, UK, and Canadian. Are they all using the same data? Yes, a lot of satellite data. Buoy data. Then, if, if it looks like it's going to be a threat, then we start involving the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Those are Air Force and NOAA planes that fly right into the storm. The cabin is often being jostled around at like a, your worst roller coaster. It's collecting temperature, uh, humidity, pressure, wind direction, and wind speed. So they're all using the same data. It's just then how they manipulate that data that gets the different right, spaghetti because each, strings. Because each model has has so much different physics and computations involved. The European model pushing it a little further inland, the American model right along the coastline. The hurricane specialists, they will look at which has performed well. So where it forms, when it forms in the year, some models do better than others. Correct. Yep. And then there's also larger aspects, whether, you know, what kind of climate environment are we in? Are we in a you know, La Nina versus El Nino? And accuracy has dramatically improved. Back in the 70s, forecasters could predict the center of a storm within 300 miles two days out. Now it's fewer than 100 miles. People need to take these seriously. People need to, to heed these forecasts. Heather Brown. There's not going to be a lot of variation to this. Okay. At this point, WCCO 4 News.